Mayurish Joshi as well is with us. And Mayurish, you know, on all accounts, it looks like a disappointing set from Wipro. Guess the market was right in guessing this one, that it is going to be a disappointing one. And I think Infi only prepare us for the worst when it comes to IT. Oh, we seem to have lost that line. Okay, let me just walk you through all the numbers that we have at this point in time. The consolidated PAT has come in lower for Wipro this time around, 8.3%, 2050. So that's a little sub our expectation. We were going in with a number of about 2,200 thereof. So the consolidated revenue, that's also down marginally, 13,700 crore rupees versus a comparable of 13,742 on a sequential basis. But Pankaj Sharma as well is on the phone line with us. Uh, his lie with us in person and uh, Pankaj, hi afternoon, a disappointing set from uh, Wipro but you know like I was mentioning to Mayuresh Joshi from Angel just now, the market was right in guessing this one, it went in with low expectations and I guess Infi only made it easier for us because uh, you know you're not going to expect too much from any of the IT majors this time. Kash, the question is for you, your first take on Wipro. Well, Hello. I you can stick with me or Urmil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess yes, let's do Pankaj that. Uh, uh, we'll get into Pankaj in a bit. But Urmil, yeah, um, I can hear yeah, you. I can so hear you. Yeah, uh, yeah. Thankfully, yes. Yeah. So now I have your Thank I'll you. you Rains and me. technology. <laughs> <laughs> Rains and technology have this uh, problem. So Urmil, uh, uh, just, for, just for the benefit of our viewers who are listening into right now, what is uh, the bare minimum guidance number that Wipro has to give for you to be happy with it? Because uh, as I say, I, I personally think that, you know, uh, that uh, Wipro needs to satisfy on all counts, including revenue, margins and bottom line, for people to get confidence back in the stock. They haven't done that this quarter. Revenue is okay. Margins are a big miss. Bottom line is a miss. What do they need to do in terms of the guidance for you to be satisfied and happy with their performance? Yeah, I, I could not hear you. I'm asking what what is the bare minimum Wipro needs to do for the guidance? Um, I would, I you know, we are building in, uh, you know, about 2.3% per, 2 CQGR for rest of the year. And for the second quarter specifically, it's just over 2% uh, kind of growth. Uh, so I would say that, uh, you know, it has to be at least, uh, uh, you know, between uh, one and a half uh, and three and a half percent kind of number. Yeah. And, yeah, go ahead. No, and, ju and just this, Urmil. So, do you think that would be possible on the back of what they have done in terms of IT revenues for Q1? I mean, just this delivery of 13,110 crores for IT services, based on that run rate, do you think they can meet your guidance, uh, meet your guidance estimates for Q2? Okay, I have the number, Urmil. They have set the Q2 IT revenue guidance at 1931 to 1950 million dollars. Well, they have set the revenue guidance at 1931 to 1950 million dollars. Hello. No, I think we've lost Urmil yeah. as well, but yeah, hello. I think we do have Pranay with us. Pranay, first a quick update on the on the revenue guidance that they've given. Q2 IT revenue guidance at 1950, 1931 to 1950 million dollars. And in the best case scenario, they see it growing just by about 1%. That is clearly disappointing because the consensus expectation was that it would be between 1.5% to 3.5%. 
actually uh, as the analysts have said q1 is traditionally soft on the organic side so we had not really penciled in anything over here because two percent as it is was coming from the health plan services acquisition so organically we have seen some contribution in q1 but q2 was the most important uh, number that we were expecting on the guidance and in a base case scenario that was expected at one and a half percent in the best case they have guided at one percent so that is clearly uh, on the disappointing side actually it is and Pankaj, this is not going to go down well with the street at all. The revenue guidance which has come in lower than what the street was anticipating. I think I think I think when we end this result season for IT, it may look like that uh, uh, the beginner which was uh, TCS uh, did the best numbers because we have seen the disappointment in case of Infosys, uh, both delivery and the guidance cut and this is the same story getting repeated in uh, Wipro. So I am slightly worried about uh, what is the direction the sector is taking and I completely agree with you that uh, this is not going to go down very well with the investor community as far as the guidance for Q2 is concerned. More than Q1 numbers, I think Q2 guidance cut and a lower figure expectation is going to be very disappointing. Pankaj, the factor of the matter is, is it not already in the price, considering after Infi, you know, you saw a rub off even coming on TCS, Wipro in any case has been going weak into the earnings, one of the most under-owned stocks in any case in the IT sector. So, I mean, is the negative already not there on the ticker? Not really, because when we look at what happens on a on a on a sector, because IT has not been a, a favorite sector for investors at least for last 12 to 18 months. Uh, similarly, Wipro is not one of the favorite names in this sector, which is not doing very well. But still, when they, whenever there is a disappointment, uh, you see a negative reaction. So yes, in a way expectations are not sky high but when you look at it other way that when expectations expectations are not really great but even at that point you are not you are not really doing well and you are disappointing it might look like uh, uh, no reason for an investor to get interested or to remain invested in the stock so yes uh, expectations are low uh, I, I am not denying that but saying that expectations low and then uh, results won't matter or disappointing guidance won't matter uh, i would probably not agree with that there would definitely be a reaction in the stock i'm, I'm certain there is a reaction in the stock tomorrow primarily because uh, as i've been saying i think this company needs to do a lot of things right in order to get the investors happy and i think both quarter one and quarter two guidance has been disappointing pranay uh, pranay just come in on this I, I think you made a very valid point that at the best case they are lower than the base case that people wanted what else in the earnings stands out for you well, what stands out is actually uh, more on the disappointing side. One, I told you about the guidance because that was the most important number. We already knew that uh, they would be doing fine in Q1 that they have on the revenue front. Margins are a disappointment. We had expected uh, a 100 basis point uh, contraction in the margins because they were uh, going to see a 40 basis point uh, tailwind over here. So the 100 basis point impact was on account of the integration of the margin dilutive acquisition health plan services and also the increase in uh, visa costs but what they have done is with the restatement of the Indian accounting standards the drop is now 190 uh, basis points on a 180 basis points sequentially so that is at 17.8 percent and you know that's far away from management's aspirational number of 23 percent that they're looking to work towards yeah Mayuresh, I'm just going to come to you but I just want to read out the quote really coming in from the CEO Abid Ali Zinu uh, saying that uh, we have delivered revenues in line with our guidance our early investments in areas such as our digital practice and cognitive intelligence notably uh, Wipro Homes is positioning as the partner of choice for customers in the chain side of uh, their business he says we expect the trajectory of growth growth to build gradually over the course of the year as we drive execution on our strategic themes and make progress towards achieving a sustainable growth trajectory. That's the word coming in from the CEO, uh, Abid Alini Muchwala. Jatin Dalal from CFO, uh, the CFO of the company is saying that IT services margins reflect the investments in rewarding our employees as well as the impact of consolidation of our acquisitions for the full quarter. He says, uh, 
we continue to expand the reach of our automation programs to harness the efficiency gains. So that's the word coming in from the CEO as well as the CFO. Um, and Mayuresh, I just want to come to you. Even though the CEO and the CFO are trying to paint a rosy picture and trying to sound un all confident, the guidance number clearly is not matching up with their commentary. This is not going to go down well with the street tomorrow morning. Uh, evening, Aisha. Oh, yes, again, I think disappointing in terms of uh, what they've guided for. And uh, in my opinion, again, it's a little bit negative if you take the base of this uh, uh, quarter around 1930 million odd dollars. Uh, again, I think if you're expecting a 1% uh, growth on the higher side, I think the markets uh, probably will feel a little disappointed on that front. But again, I think through the management commentary, I think we'll come to how the segmental performance has been. Last quarter, the financial solutions business uh, or the sub-vertical did see weakness. Uh, if the weakness continues over there because of what is expected to come out of continental Europe, I think that can have some amount of telling effect in terms of their discretionary spending on the client side. What happens with the energy space, because that contributes almost 14% to their revenues, is also going to be an important aspect to be looked out for. So I think is the guidance being lowered because of uh, A, discretionary spending trends expected to go down, and B, I think the drag probably with a couple of these verticals probably still continuing because largely I think uh, Q3, Q4 are expected to be soft. So I think they'll have to do a huge amount of recovery in Q2, which does not seemingly seem possible at this point of time as they've guided uh, with the figure that they've given this time around. So again, I think disappointment uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, what they've guided for Asia. Mm. Mayuresh, uh, you know, but just to stretch that point forward, uh, what is your sense on what we see from the stock price right now? Vipro, in any case, is, uh, you know, not high up there when it comes to the pecking order in IT. Uh, not just that, after Infosys, I would say the street is in any case slightly more geared up to face the IT numbers and not really going in with high expectations. What's the call on the stock now? Well, again, I think uh, if you look at uh, uh, the valuations uh, stacking Wipro against the other IT majors, Wipro probably is uh, one of the most uh, undervalued stock. And for obvious reasons, I think they've not been able to probably perform uh, on their key business verticals. And that is the whole reason that the street probably does not want to give it higher multiples at this point of time. Secondly, I think one must also understand the kind of uh, themes uh, that the CEO had played out in the last quarter. I think we really need to see some strategic uh, defining happening. Yeah, indeed. That is indeed, uh, you know, Wipro. So just to reiterate and highlight for the benefit of our viewers who are just tuning in, and I just want to bring up the scorecard for you to try and analyze Wipro's numbers a little better. Uh, the dollar revenue guidance, of course, has been lower than what the street was anticipating. The Q2 guidance, that is, on IT services. The margins have come in below street estimates. The profits are in line, and the revenue as well has been in line. Wipro in today's trading session, in any case, uh, closed in a little bit weak. So let's see how the reaction on the stock price come tomorrow is. Uh, but Bankar, just to reiterate and really sum up your thoughts on Wipro, how would you uh, rate Wipro's earnings? And what more importantly, would your pecking order be now, uh, now that TCS Infi as well as Wipro are, are all out with their numbers? See, I think uh, uh, on Wipro, Particularly, uh, one thing which which uh, we have seen is that uh, uh, there is really uh, no. Uh, I would not call it a hopeless situation, but uh, uh, whatever we are seeing, uh, that there is a huge gap between delivery, uh, communication, uh, and the what management aspires to be. And unless it gets uh, corrected uh, very, very quickly, uh, people would continue to see uh, disappointment from results and also Wipro would remain undervalued. Uh, as far as packing order is concerned, I think uh, after the correction, I would uh, think that Infi is uh, relatively better placed. Uh, I hope that uh, they are going to get uh, at least a couple of things right in next few quarters. So if I just compare TCS, Infi, and Wipro uh, on valuation, fundamentals, and outlook, these three parameters, I think that still it is a better bet uh, that you go with Infosys, followed by TCS and Wipro uh, would be the last in these three names at least. Mm. Urmil, what is your sense? Now that the three big boys are all out with their earnings, uh, how would you stack up the pecking order? And would you still give TCS that upper head and margin? 
yeah so our uh, our pecking order amongst the three large caps who have uh, come up with their results uh, it's quite similar uh, uh, it's uh, in fee which uh, is uh, at this price is our top pick uh, followed by TCS and uh, Wipro Okay, gentlemen, I'll let you all go on that note. Thanks so much for taking the time out and analyzing Wipro's earnings for us. It would be interesting to see how Wipro actually reacts to the earnings come tomorrow or rather the how, how the stock really reacts to the earnings uh, come tomorrow morning. It's a disappointing set. And here's a comment coming in from Abid Ali Nimuchwala, CEO at Wipro, and saying that we've delivered revenues in line with our guidance. He says our early investments in areas such as digital practice and cognitive intelligence notably Wipro Homes is positioning as the partner of choice for customers in the chain side of their business. He says we expect the trajectory of growth to build gradually over the course of the year as we drive execution on our strategic themes and making progress towards achieving a sustainable growth trajectory.